10-year-old HB knew that HB would be a preacher. I have had one consuming passion after trusting Christ as a boy, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I preached my first sermon at the age of 11, was called to pastor my first church at the age of 17. It is all I have done my adult life. So I wrote on pastoring really as a follow-up to the book I had written previously on preaching. And it just seemed appropriate that this subject would follow the preaching book. And the heart of the book really is not a theology of pastoral ministry, and it's not a how-to guide for the very practical and different responsibilities that a pastor has. But as I wrote in the introduction, it's more of a compass to make sure that a pastor is going in the right direction. In the midst of various responsibilities that you have, in the care for your own soul, the shepherding of your family, the leading of your staff, and the pastoring of the church. They're just principles that I hoped would be able to help the reader as a pastor know that he's going in the right direction. Several years ago, our church sought to plant a new congregation on the other side of town, and that church plant project became a land acquisition of a congregation who for financial reasons were losing their facilities. And somehow from there, it became a church merger where a 100-year-old black church and a 100-year-old white church merged and married one another. We're in our fourth year of that work and God is blessing the ministry of that work. It has been its challenges, it has been its ups and downs, as, as I say, two old congregations have learned how to live together and to love one another, but God has unified the church in the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as a pastor, I've been encouraged to see how God has used his word to change hearts and minds. But beyond that, to watch in the life of the congregation, relationships established. Last year there was a storm in our city and one of our brothers lost everything in the storm. And to watch the congregation, just as brothers and sisters in Christ, come around to share that burden it had nothing to do with race or culture or ethnicity or any of those things. It was just the body of Christ serving one another. I look at that and I say, that looks like church to me. So my first pastor was my father, who the Lord snatched away from me when I was 16 years old. And God, over the course of my life and ministry, had brought three men into my life who, first of all, were pastors for me, and secondly, who showed me what it meant to be a pastor. Those three men are John Reed, Jr., Melvin Wade, and Maurice Watson. Before receiving my first book, I remember I was at an event and got an email asking about the different covers, potentially, for the book and which one I preferred. And it was just the, one of the weirdest questions I ever got. There were like three different covers, but all of them had H.B. Charles on it, so it would, almost didn't matter. It was just an overwhelming moment. So I am somewhat a nerd, and I have two things that are relaxing to me, and those are reading and writing. And they recharge my batteries, they clear my mind, they uh, focus my thoughts. Outside of that, I don't really have many hobbies outside of hanging out with my wife and children and friends when I get the opportunity. Looking back on our merger, if there's one thing I would have done 
differently just along the process. And I do feel like we did our due diligence and made every best effort that we know, knew to do. I just wish in some way we would have had forms and opportunities to talk more. These were dynamics that no one anticipated about really the birth of a new church. But I wish we would have talked more, not just in our leadership, but just among ourselves as a congregation, getting to know one another more and learning those things that were hurts and fears and hopes and goals along the way. So on pastoring has several sections. And the first begins with just the devotional, personal, spiritual life of the pastor. I think that's vital because everything that we do for the Lord is to be the overflow of our heart's devotion to Him. And sometimes I think the danger point for pastors is that in the professional ministry work, in the public face of the pastor, while you're keeping up with all of those responsibilities as a shepherd, you can, if you're not careful, guard the neglect of your own soul. The major instrument, the major tool of ministry is our hearts, and the guarding of our hearts above everything else is vital. Who we are as Christians, as husbands, as fathers, how we lead our staffs, not just as the person at the head of the table, but as a friend, as a mentor, as an example. Those dynamics of what pastoral ministry uh, are about, I am hoping will be uplifting and challenging and encouraging to the reader. Some of those things I feel like I wish someone would have said to me when I was starting early on, and I hope that uh, they'll learn some, in some instances from my mistakes and be able to move forward without running over some of the landmines that I did. 